Hello friends, I have a camera to discuss today that is new to me, but not new in any other sense. The Nikon F6 was released in 2004 and it was Nikon's final film SLR. That was 17 years ago. But you know what? They didn't stop making it until October 2020. That's less than a year ago as I'm filming this. This is the best of everything Nikon had to offer in a film SLR. So I grabbed a bunch of film, I shifted my photography thought process as well as my camera reviewing process. I mean, I'm not considering the number of pixels on the sensor or video capabilities or any number of things that relate to digital bodies, but not film bodies. So in this review, I will discuss some capabilities and limitations of this camera body, but I'll also discuss how it was to shoot film in 2021. Things like the film I used, the cost, how my actual shooting process was different, and how I digitized and printed my photos. If you're new here, hello, my name is Lee, and I share videos every week on any topic where you might have a camera in your hand. From new gear reviews to old gear reviews like this one, and technique, travel. Sometimes you'll even see my partner in crime, Raymond, who was actually the driver behind getting me to review this F6. So subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. And before we get into the camera and more of my images, this portion of the video is sponsored by KEH. If you are not familiar with KEH, they buy and sell used gear. They are who I use to buy and sell used gear. In fact, Raymond and I have done both in the last month. We purchased this F6 from them, and we sold our Nikon Z50 and kit lens to them. It was sad to see the Z50 go, but it just wasn't getting much use from us. And I would love to think that it would go to a good home where it just won't sit collecting dust. I got a free estimate for the gear online. I was completely satisfied with the estimate, so I sent the gear to them. They assessed the kit, sent me an offer, I accepted, and the deal was done. It was quick and easy, which is exactly what I need. If I had to deal with the antics of selling on an auction or trading site, it just wouldn't get done because I've simply had too many bad experiences. And actually I like KEH so much that I joined their affiliate program, which is good news for you because if you use my links and codes that are in the description of this video, you can get a discount off the purchase of used gear and a bonus on the sale of your used gear. And then I get a small commission, which helps keep this channel up and running. Okay, back to the F6. I have shot film here and there in the last decade, but never for a dedicated project with the intention of making a video on this channel. I always just did it for fun. A roll here, a roll there. So when Raymond found the F6 on KEH.com and proposed this project, He's been wanting an F6 for years, so he had been looking for one for a while. I knew that this would be different from those other times and that I had accountability. I knew that I was reviewing the camera and sharing my photography from it with you all. So I said the reason I shot film in the last decade or so was for fun. For me, and probably for anyone used to a completely digital experience, film slows me down. I'm forced to be more mindful. With a digital camera, I can pretty much just take as many photos as I want with almost no consequence. With film, there are only a certain number of exposures on each roll of film. There's no delete button and you have to get the entire roll developed and that costs money. So every time I hit that shutter release button, I'm spending money. <laughs> I don't take that lightly. I'll get back to that a little bit later. My, my process with it, the cost of developing film, First, let's discuss this camera. While I use all sorts of different cameras and I even own many different brands these days, my roots in photography are firmly planted in Nikon soil. That's what I exclusively used for a very long time. So when I picked up the F6, I just felt right at home. Nikon DSLRs, they feel like an extension of my body because I shot with them for so long. And, and this, though not digital, is the same style. I knew what all the autofocus modes and icons were. I was used to the button and dial placement. It was as though my hands knew where to be without me thinking about it. Now the menus are a different story. They were a bit of a mystery at first, but once I figured out how to reset the settings, remember this is a used camera and it had someone else's favorite settings dialed in. 
once I reset, I didn't spend almost any time on the screen beyond confirming that the correct film speed showed up when I put a new roll in. I pretty much kept the camera in aperture priority, keeping an eye on shutter speed, of course. Remember, I don't have in-body image stabilization to help me with camera shake. And actually, I didn't use any lenses that even had optical stabilization. I mostly used single point, single servo autofocus, because I expected it would be reliable, and it was. I kept the camera in center-weighted metering mode, and I trusted it to take care of me. <laughs> Because I am uber familiar with Nikon cameras, I know their tendencies. And in circumstances where I knew any camera really would potentially under or overexpose the image, I was able to dial in some exposure compensation. One thing that Raymond brought up when he captured his first photo with the F6 was, oh yeah, this is the D2X. We owned a D2X and we know it well. And as odd as it sounds, the F6 shares a lot of its insides with the D2X. In its day, this was a quick camera, both in terms of autofocus and frames per second in continuous shooting. It can capture five and a half frames per second or even more with the optional grip. That gets you up to eight frames per second. That being said, I'm certainly not burning through film using continuous shooting. The autofocus speed and accuracy was also very good when this camera was new, though you won't find face detect or selectable subject tracking here and no autofocus points across the entire frame. In fact, they're grouped right into the middle and there are only 11 of them. That led me to doing a lot of focus and recompose with some manual focus thrown in for precision. And that was fine with me until the last handful of years when digital cameras got so smart with their autofocus detection and tracking, that was how I used my camera. Another thing that is a matter of perspective and preference is the sound of the camera. I have grown to very much appreciate my very quiet mirrorless cameras. And while the F6 is extremely quiet for a film camera, it's pretty loud with the perspective that I have now. I definitely noticed people noticing my camera when I was snapping off shots. I generally like to blend into my surroundings, but the noise is simply a trade-off when using a film camera. Another trade-off is the batteries. The batteries are kind of a pain. If you purchase the grip, you can use double A's, but without the grip, the camera takes a couple of CR123A batteries. That's not generally a type of battery that we have lying around the house. Both the expensive grip for double A's or using the CR123A batteries speak to the fact that this camera and any film camera in 2021 requires a commitment from the user. You can't simply take the camera home and just plug it into a USB charger. Let's address something here. I can talk to you about how quick the camera is, the usability, but I can't discuss things that I normally would in a digital camera review. Things like image quality, color, and high ISO performance. The reason is that a film camera doesn't really add anything to your image. It doesn't have much to do with the quality of the images. This camera will meter and autofocus for you, and those do affect the quality of the images. But in terms of colors and characteristics of the image, sharpness, the film and the lenses are what make a difference. So let's discuss both of those. There are quite a lot of different 35 millimeter film stock types available out there, each with their own unique look. And remember that it is your film that controls your ISO. So you have to think about where you'll be shooting and what the lighting will be like and choose your film speed accordingly. Now, quick note here. The F6 can detect your film speed and it will display it on the back screen and the camera will meter accordingly. However, you can change how the F6 meters exposure by manually setting ISO in the camera. Also, keep in mind that you will experience a great deal of grain in your images, even at what would be considered lower ISO sensitivities on a modern digital camera. The interesting thing though is that from my own experience and from what I've heard from others, the grain is a part of what makes a film photograph recognizable as a film photograph, and it's a quality that film photographers actually like. 
the grain pattern is different from what you would experience on a digital camera. Even if you're using those super cool film simulations that cameras like Fujifilm have on board. And now for lenses. Just like with digital photography, your lens will make a huge difference in the quality of your image. But what lenses can you use? The F6 uses Nikon's F mount, and you can use a ton of Nikon lenses. AFD, AFG, AFI, AFS, and AFVR work perfectly. AIP lenses can manually focus, and then AI lenses can manually focus, but you can only use aperture priority in manual exposure modes. Moving to newer lenses, the E lenses with an electronic aperture work with the limitation that they only shoot at their maximum aperture. And AFP lenses will not work at all. Now, when I asked for questions from you all, one viewer asked if the camera supports newer Sigma and Tamron lenses, which is a great question. While I wasn't able to try a Tamron lens, I did have a couple of Sigma F mount lenses in for testing. That's a story for another day, but I was seeing which one I wanted to purchase. If you're wondering why I was purchasing an F mount lens when I shoot mostly mirrorless, subscribe. And that video will come up in your feed in the next month or so or actually members in a couple of Mondays, the member feature will give you a sneak peek as well. I will link in the description to learn more about channel membership if that sounds like something that you might be interested in checking out. But with those Sigma lenses, one of them worked just fine. The other had an electronic aperture, so it behaved just like a Nikon lens would with an electronic aperture. So the bottom line here is that you would definitely need to do a little bit of research when choosing your lenses on this camera. This camera is a mix between analog and digital. Obviously you're using film, but there are things like how you can purchase an external data reader with a compact flash card inserted, plug it into the camera's data port, and the F6 will record the EXIF data for each shot and how the autofocus got so responsive. I can definitely see how this camera was the final evolution of Nikon's film body legacy in a time when digital was taking over. Let's discuss cost. If you purchase an F6 used in good condition, you're looking at somewhere around $1,000 here in the US. That's saying a lot since many film cameras trade for almost free on the secondhand market the F6 still garners a premium. As for film, prices seem to go up and down and will vary even further depending on where you purchase it. I generally see prices between seven and $15 locally and potentially much more online if you're looking for something specific. But again, these prices do swing pretty widely. And then for developing, that's another story. Again, I found a variety of prices, my own local camera shop can develop overnight for less than $10, and they offered to scan the negatives for around $10 more. Looking online where I would send my rolls of film somewhere, costs generally were quite a bit higher, and I would be waiting weeks to get my negatives back. Shooting film is not an inexpensive proposition, which is actually a part of why it is so mindful for me. Like I said earlier, I am very aware that I am spending money every single time I press that shutter release button. Lots of folks asked me how we digitize our negatives. I could have paid the camera lab to do it, but we actually enjoy the process. It's sort of like date night for Raymond and I. We do have a flatbed scanner that came with film negative and slide trays, but we actually prefer using the Nikon ES2 film digitizer from Nikon and photographing the negatives with our Z7 FTZ adapter and 60 millimeter F-mount macro lens. Raymond made a video about how we do that process and I will link to it in the description for you to check out. So, the camera works quite well. You really can't ask much more than that from a film body. The autofocus was great. Metering is reliable. The camera is responsive. I can use nearly the entire heritage of F-mount lenses on it. There isn't much to complain about. While we initially borrowed this from KEH, I kind of already knew what was gonna happen. It isn't a camera that I will use a lot. I prefer a smaller form factor and a bit more of the tech stripped away for my own film photography fun, but 
Raymond will use it. He's already plotting how we are going to develop at home with various chemistry, both standard and experimental. And we both have some ideas for projects that I will share here on the channel. I'd like to do some direct comparisons of the Fujifilm film simulations in their digital cameras with the actual film stock. I mentioned Raymond's video where he demonstrated how we use our Nikon Z7 to digitize our negatives, but I think we can probably share more about that whole process. Our flatbed scanner, editing. If you have any requests, let me know. I'm always looking for new project ideas that I can share here. And that is all for today. Thank you to KEH for continuing to support this channel and for being my go-to place for buying and selling gear. They definitely make my life easier. Remember to check out my links to KEH in the description of this video. And thank you for watching.